Here we are back again. For some reason, our our video has been cut off tonight. Again, it's been, uh, gosh, maybe it's almost been a year since we've done this live. So we're in and out, in and out. We're still trying to learn the system tonight. I um, appreciate you being here. So again, get those questions in. What do you need help with? This is Foster Talk with Dr. John. We want to answer your questions, and we're going to try to get to them. We're going to try to get to them right now. So here with us tonight and Danny's here with us tonight. Elena's here with us tonight. We got a number of people who are here with us tonight. What do you need help with? What's the number one thing you're struggling with right now? Um, all right. Thank, uh, three, yeah, Teresa, thank you for joining us. Glad you're here. Danny, yeah, we miss you. All right. So with that in mind, friends, what do you need help with? Get those questions for us. Let us know the number one thing you need help with tonight. We want to help you. We're here to 7 to 7.30. We do it. Well, we're going to start doing it again every Tuesday, every Tuesday night, every Tuesday night right here on this page, giving you the help you need as a foster parent. Hey, I was a foster parent to 60 plus kids. I know it is the most challenging thing I've ever done. The most str the struggled, Elena, there's Elena. Hey, Elena. I struggled as a foster parent. I felt like quitting. Sure. I have felt like quitting. I have felt, I have had times where I thought, I can't do this anymore. There have been times where I thought, um, I, I, I'm frustrated with the system. There are times where I thought I'm I'm just fed up. Yes, that's normal feelings as a boss parent. We all feel that way. But at the same time, it's been the most rewarding thing I've ever done. And I'm sure maybe for you as well. So I've had those doubts, of course. I've had those doubts too. Um, so what do you need help with tonight? What is the number one thing that you are saying, Dr. John, help, help, help. I need help. I need help with something. We want to know what it is right now, whether it is reactive attachment disorder, whether it is um, whether it is children who have eating disorders, whether it is um, children who have attachment issues, whether it's adoption, whatever. Hey, Ashley, glad you're here this night. Ashley, thank you for joining us. Whatever it is tonight, let us know what you need help with. If you're saying, Dr. John, I can't do this anymore. I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I don't feel like I get the support I need from the caseworkers. The birth parents are, are giving me a hard time. My friends and family members don't understand what I'm doing. What I, hey, Marissa, glad you're here. And Beverly's here as well. Danielle is there too. Um, glad you guys are here. Hey, uh, Vilmenia, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Vilmenia, glad you're here as well tonight with us. So, friends, what do you need to help with us? Again, get those fingers flying. Let us know what you need. And we're going to make sure that you get the answers that you need as you care for children in foster care. Uh, Dad, Danny, the, the signal keeps freezing. Well, hopefully it's okay right now. Give me a big thumbs up if it's not freezing for you right now. I'm hoping that it is not freezing. If it is, we're gonna make sure it doesn't by doing something a little bit different next Tuesday night, okay? So um, hopefully right now it's going smooth for you. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, I need some questions, friends. I need some questions from you. Uh, so Danny, Elena, Marie, Katie, Teresa, all of you here tonight, can you, is this video going through? Give me a heads up if it is. Let me know. Because again, we want to make sure that you get the help that you need. Hey, Marie, glad you're here tonight. And I see that Scott is here too. Hey, Scott, glad you're here with us tonight. Um, all right. You know, there, as I said earlier, there have been times where I thought, I just can't do this anymore. I just can't do this. Hey, Teresa. Um, Hey, Elena, Ashley, uh, there's times I thought, yeah, I'm just struggling so much as a foster parent. <sighs> I, I just, I'm overwhelmed. I need help. That's normal. That's still normal for all of us. When we bring children to our home who have anxiety issues, issues, hey, Danny, thank you, issues of um, attachment, issues of trust, issues of anger, issues of whatever it might be. That's hard for us. So it's quite normal that our friends and family members don't understand what we do fully. The only person, the only person who really understands, hey, Teresa, thank you so much. Um, what it's like to be a foster parent is another foster parent. All right, Vilmenia, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Vilmenia says, my, what would my first step to become a foster parent? Well, Vilmenia, great question. Thank you for asking. The first thing you need to do is, well, you can go to the Foster Care Institute, our, my page, the Foster Care Institute, and go to the link where it says how to become a foster parent. It's going to walk you through the steps, okay? But really what you need to do is have a discussion with your family members, have a discussion with your spouse or partner, and then if everybody else is on board, because everybody does need to be on board, then you go to your local child welfare agency, whether it's private or 
a, a, um, a state one, and you let them know that you are interested in becoming a foster parent. And of course, you'll need to sign up um, for classes, there'll be a home inspection, there'll be a drug testing, police background check, that type of thing, because they want to make sure that your house is a safe, stable environment for children. All right, again, go to the Foster Care Institute, my website, and you'll find a lot of information there for you. Okay, really appreciate you asking about Nimia. Thank you for being here. And of course, sign up for, for our newsletter as well. If you want to sign up for the Foster Care Institute newsletter, just put your email address and we'll make sure you sign up. All right, Ashley says, new to fostering and was one myself. Totally in the honeymoon stage, still late but having some problems, teens being mean little ones. Teens struggle. You know, it's hard having a teenager in your house. Um, at the same time, these are the kids maybe who need the most time and patience because no no child, no teenager, no youth wants to be in the foster system. You know, it's a label that no one wants, right? So they need, and they may try to resist you. Actually, they may try to resist you and try to tr test you as well. They want to see if they can test you, if they can trust you. We have a great webinar, actually. I'd love for you to watch it. I'd love for you to watch it called Parenting Troubled Teens. Parenting Troubled Teens right here at the Foster Care Institute. Now, hopefully, actually, you already are a member of the Foster Care Institute, so you can get access to that webinar, plus over 65 hours of online training webinars to keep your CEUs you need for this year to keep license, right? Printable certificates, 15 free ebooks. That's right, 15 free ebooks, including one by our good friend Danny Van, um, and more. So sign up for that if you haven't already. Become a special member and get unlimited access for the next 12 months. Parenting Troubled Teens is the webinar you want to watch. It's going to give you all the insights, the tips, the strategies to, to help those teens, again, who are really struggling. They don't want to be in the system. They don't want to be in your house. They probably want to be on their own because they're a teenager. They're filled with that normal teenage angst. And then on top of that, they've got that label of being a youth in foster care, something nobody wants. Okay. Um, so, Ashley, I appreciate you asking. Check out that webinar, okay? Check out that webinar, Parenting Troubled Teens. Actually, I'm going to write it here. I'm going to I'm going to send it to you later on, okay? Um, Whatever it might be. It's hard. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so check out that webinar. All right. A great question there. Um, oh, Ashley says, I'm not a member. Where do I go? Well, Ashley, when this session's over, I'm going to send you a link, and you can sign up. And, Ashley, it's a very, very low fee very low fee. It's less than 70 cents uh, per training webinar. And you can't beat that price, right? Less than 70 cents per training webinar, printable certificates, 15 free ebooks, and a whole lot more. And you're going to love the webinar, Parenting Troubled Teens, okay? In fact, I'm giving to, uh, where did it go? All right. There it is. Ashley, I just sent it to you. Bingo right now. And that'll, that's where you can sign up. And actually, as soon as you sign up, we're going to give you access, unlimited access for the next 12 months to over 65 hours of online training webinars, printable certificates, the whole thing. All right. So glad you asked. Thank you for being here. Let me know how you, after you watch that webinar, what you think. Um, you're going to love it. And it's a webinar for you right there. Webinar for everybody. Uh, all right. That, that was, we had some great questions so far. This is Foster Talk with Dr. John. I'm your host, Dr. John DeGarmo, founder and director of the Foster Care Institute, foster parent myself to 60 plus kids, and we are answering your questions right here live for the next 15 minutes. We had a break for quite some time. We were doing it in the midst of COVID when it first started, when we first shut down, right? And if you've seen some of my interviews, you know that I feel that we did a tremendous disservice for our children. We have seen the rise of teenage suicide. We have seen the rise of, um, my pleasure, Ashley says thank you, my pleasure, Ashley. We've seen the rise of child abuse. We've seen the rise of homeless youth from foster care during COVID. We've seen the rise of learning developmental issues. We've seen the rise of, um, of eating disorders and you uh, we've seen the rise of mental health issues for all children across the board during this time but we started this foster talk with dr john during that time and then we cut it down to tuesdays and thursday nights then we took a break for a while uh, quite some time ago because i was getting back on the road doing a lot of speaking and then the other night i thought you know what i need to get back on because really i miss you guys i miss being with you i miss spending time with you and um i'm so glad you're here all right so we want to make sure we can answer your questions. Uh, anything you're struggling with tonight, whatever you need the help with the most, again, whether it's issues of attachment, whether it's issues of adoption, whether it's issues of your family members really don't understand your lifestyle. Let me underline that word, lifestyle. 
you'll have a different lifestyle than anybody else. Your friends and family members really don't appreciate or understand or completely grasp what you're doing as a foster parent. Because when you bring children in your home who struggle with issues, anxiety, um, they may not understand what it's like 24 hours a day, seven days a week in your house caring for these children. All right, Bill Manning says, sorry, I got a call from kids. Please tell me what is the first step to become a foster parent? No worries, Bill Manning, I thank you for asking. Go to my website. Actually, I'm going to send you a link right here. I'm going to send you a link at the website, the Foster Care Institute. It's called How to Be a Foster Parent, okay? I'm going to send you that link right about now, okay? Um, in just a moment, I'm going to send you this link. And this will walk you through the steps on how to become a foster parent. It gives you everything you know there, okay? So bingo, there it is. I just sent you the link right there, okay? Just responded to you. This is going to help you. This is, but basically, you need to make sure that your friends and family, your friend, your family members, your children, any children in your house, spouse or partner, or uh, whoever it might be that's in your home, make sure everybody's on board because you all need to be on board together. This is something that you can't do by yourself unless you're, of course, a single parent. But if you have a spouse or partner, they've got to be on board as well. So have that discussion. When the discussion is over, then contact your local child welfare agency, whether it's a private one or whether it is um, a faith-based one or one for the state, whatever it might be, um, and then let them know that you're ready to begin the training process. All right. And it's let me tell you, it's challenging. At the same time, it is very, very rewarding. Every child that's come through my house has made me a better person in some way. Val, Valminia says, thank you. My pleasure, Valminia. Thank you for asking. Uh, let me know how it goes. Um, again, sign up for our newsletter. Sign up for our newsletter. If you're not a member, hey, if you don't get the Foster Care Institute newsletter tonight, if you don't have it, Valminia, Ashley, uh, the rest of you, if you don't have it, sign up for it. It's absolutely free. It's got the Foster Care News of the Week, the Foster Care Tip of the Week, the Motivational Moment, the Foster Care Institute uh, 101 Video Lessons, and so much more. You need to get it if you are a member, if you are a foster parent or an adoptive parent or a kinship parent and you want to get your sign in, I want newsletter, put your email address. I want newsletter, put your email address. We will make sure that you get that newsletter tonight. Okay, tonight. All right, we have about, uh, about 10 more minutes left. We're answering your questions here, right here, live Foster Talk with Dr. John. We want to make sure that you get the help that you need here live. So again, what do you need help with? What are you struggling with right now? What's well, the number one thing that you're saying, Dr. John, I need help. Where do I sign up? Belminia, all you need to do is sign up. Let me go. I'm going to go back to the website here and I'm going to click on there, a link and let's see. Uh, uh, where'd you go? I'm looking for where you went there. Uh, hey, Danny says the newsletter is full of awesome information. Danny, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, Valminia, you can sign up right. Let me see that right. Bingo. There, there, there it is. Bingo. All right, you just sign up there. Okay. Um, you can sign up there. Very simple, very easy, and we'll make sure you get that newsletter. Okay. Uh, Christina's here. Christina, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I see that Lisa's here tonight, and Gina's here. Caitlin is here tonight. Uh, Amy's here. Susie's here. Hey, glad, glad everybody's here tonight. Marina's here. Uh, Marissa's here. Glad you guys are all here with us tonight. This is Foster Talk with Dr. John. We're answering your questions for a few more minutes. Christina says, big challenges in adoptive parent, learning disabilities, behavioral issues, and striving to help them succeed given the challenges. It is hard. Christina, it is hard. It is hard. And just because you have an adoption doesn't necessarily mean it's a happy ending ever after. What many don't recognize, Christina, and I hope that you recognize this, is that 65% of adoptive parents, that's right, 65% of adoptive parents experience something known as post-adoption depression syndrome, PADS, post-adoption depression syndrome, all right, um, for a number of reasons. And the children as well may also experience post-adoption depression as well. So both can experience it. Christina, we've got a couple great webinars here at the Foster Care Institute. One of them is called post-adoption depression syndrome. we got a couple about adoption. You might also want to look about the ones about behavioral issues, anger management, um, positive parenting solutions, and a whole bunch of webinars. Christina, I think you're going to find very, very helpful, okay? Uh, so hopefully, Christina, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you're one of the 11,000 plus foster parents who are already a special member. 
because I want you to watch those webinars. Christina, I want you to watch post-adoption depression syndrome. I want you to watch the ones about adoption. I want you to watch the positive parenting solutions. I want you to watch anger management. Um, I definitely have that. Christina, fan oh, you have post-adoption depression syndrome or you have membership. Christina, I'm hoping you have membership for the webinars. If you don't, we need to get you signed up, Christina. We need to get you signed up. Um, over 65 hours of, un of unlimited access to webinars, uh, printable certificates, CEUs, you need to keep licensed, 15 free ebooks, and a whole lot more. So hopefully, Christina, you're already a member. I want to make sure that you have that access, okay? Um, but yes, post adoption depression syndrome, as I mentioned earlier, 65% of adoptive parents experience it. So many don't even recognize it. It's something that is not really discussed or talked about. Hey, Teresa, glad you're here with us. Hey, Heather. Um, but so many struggle with it. And uh, it's, it's something something that adoptive parents don't talk about or even acknowledge or recognize because there may be some type of guilt associated with it. There might be some type of shame associated with it. Um, and then at the t most, most likely, they simply aren't aware of post-adoption depression. Uh, yeah, you got post-adoption depression? Yeah, I understand, Christina. Okay, Christina, I'm going to give you a link. I'm going to give you a link right here. And this is where you sign up right now, Christina. This is where you sign up tonight, hopefully, to become a member. And Christina, you're bingo. I just sent it to you, Christina. Okay, I just responded to you right now. And then that way you're going to get access to all those webinars. 12-month access for over 65 hours of online training webinars. Please watch first post-adoption depression syndrome. Watch that one first. Then watch positive parenting solutions. Okay. Then watch anger management. We got a number on uh, adoption. Maybe your child is struggling with um, behavioral issues. If that's the case, check out the ones on behavior. All right. Check out the one on um, on uh, if they may be his sleep anxiety. Check that one out. Eating disorders. Check that one out. Christina says, "Thank you, my pleasure." Christina, my pleasure. Let me know how those webinars go, and while you're there at the website, sign up for the newsletter as well. But Christina, I'm looking forward to giving you access tonight, and um, yeah. And who else is okay. Oh, Velmenia, I'm looking forward to giving you access tonight as well. All right, we've got a few more questions here. Ashley, looking forward to giving you access as well. A few more moments here. We want to make sure that we give your questions answered. So whatever you're struggling with, doesn't matter. I've been there myself as a foster parent. Listen, 60 plus kids, I know how hard it is for you to be a foster parent. How do I know? Because I've lived it, my friends. I've been there right there with you. I know what it's like, those moments where you say, I can't do this anymore, I'm struggling. Um, hey, Christina, my pleasure. Uh, I, I get it. I know what it is like. It's the hardest thing I've done. At the same time, my friend, it is the most rewarding thing I've done. Um, but yes, I have felt like pulling my hair out. I felt like crying. In fact, I've cried lots. If you saw my TED Talk. If you've read any of my books, if you see me speaking live in person, you know that my heart's been broken over and over and over, over and over and over. It's the hardest thing I have done. Um, okay, so we want to make sure we get your, yeah, maybe just a few more questions left. I'm sorry, a few more minutes left. What can we help you with tonight? What can we help you with tonight? Uh, Asia. Welcome, Asia. Glad you're here this night. My 13-year-old foster daughter is having a little bit of trouble going to sleep at 9 a.m. 9 p.m. Is that a little too early for a 13-year-old on school nights? No, I don't think so, um, Asia. It's they need that sleep at that age. At that age, um, their body's really developing. Their brain is developing at a fast pace, and they need that time to sleep. They need to get that sleep. There's a lot of brain development happening when they're sleeping now. There may be a number of reasons why they're struggling um, sleeping in Asia that's quite normal, particularly for a child in the foster care system. As we said earlier, they don't want to be in foster care, right? They don't want to be in foster care. Um, they may be a scary house. Maybe the child was just placed in your home. I don't know. But if it's a new placement, then there's lots of anxieties, and lots of fears, and lots of concerns, and lots of questions. How long will I be here? When will I go home? Will I ever see my parents again? Who are these people? These are questions that are very normal for youth placed in foster care. Um, so, so there's a number of techniques, Asia, that you can do to help that child sleep better. We go into great detail about it, Asia, at the webinar 
sleep to sleep anxieties and children in foster care. Sleep anxieties and children in foster care. Asia, I'm going to post this right now. I'm going to write down that you need to write sleep anxieties. I'm writing it down. Sleep anxieties and children in and children in foster care. I'm going to give you a link to it right now. Hopefully, hopefully, Asia, you have access. Like everybody else, we have 11,000 members, Asia. I'm hoping you already have access to the web, to the web member, membership. If you don't, sign up tonight, Asia, and watch Sleep Anxieties and Children Foster Care. But there's a number of things you can do, music, lighting, um, melanoma, weighted blankets. We, again, we go into tremendous detail about how you can help children and youth who are experiencing sleep anxieties. And it sounds like your 13-year-old does. And again, it's very, very normal. But, but uh, going back to it, um, you're welcome, Asia. You're welcome. Most welcome. But yeah, 13 years of age at nine o'clock, it's a perfect time. It's a perfect time. Elena, how 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 some video games? Sorry, what's your question? How some video games sure sound like from actual mass shootings going today? Oh yeah, sure. I've written about that extensively. Uh, Elena, I've written about that extensively. Um, have you done it in service on different shooting video games? I've not done it in service about it, but I've spoken about it. Yes, I've spoken about it. I've written about it, but nothing specifically about that. But I do have a webinar that I do in person about um, the dangers of online technology, social media. We talk a lot about video games. In fact, the book, uh, Keeping Foster Children Safe Online, goes into great detail about how video games can be very, very harmful for children in the foster care system and children in general. Children in general. Okay, hey, we are about out of time. If you want to squeeze one more question in, we will see if we can get it for you, okay? If you can squeeze one more children in, we will question one more question in. Sorry, <laughs> one more question in. I'm multitasking. Hey, Madison, glad you're here this tonight. Um, I see that Elise is here tonight too, so glad you're here this tonight, Elise. Uh, all right, if you want to squeeze one more question in, we'll see if we can get that for you. Asia, my pleasure. Asia, I know you're going to really find that webinar very, very helpful. Again, sleep anxieties and children in foster care. Check it out. It's going to have so many tips, so many strategies as you care for that child. And as I mentioned earlier, every child that comes into foster care is filled with some type of anxiety. You know, despite all the anxiety they've experienced, all the child abuse, neglect, abandonment, whatever they've experienced before being placed in your home, being placed in your home, being placed into my home, however comforting, however safe, nurturing, stable, loving it can be, it's still very scary still very scary for these children they have so many questions it is a time of anxiety being placed into our homes so of course they have issues of sleep of course they have issues of trust of attachment eating disorders anger management um, attachment issues it's all very very normal our job is to help them through those difficult times through a number of ways and we go into great detail about that in a number of my books uh, and of course in our webinars too hey I've enjoyed this. I'm so glad we're doing this once more. We had a few technical problems at the very, very beginning, um, getting our feet wet, so to speak, again. Because, you know, we did this a long time, but then we took a break off. Uh, Danica says, what is the best, you advice, best advice you have for new foster parents? Danica, my best advice is this. Buckle up. Get ready. Be flexible. Um, be, uh, recognize that your friends and family members aren't really going to understand what you do. Um, you need a support group. Oh, you need a support group of other foster parents. That's why we're here, right? And I'm going to ask you, Danica, to sign up for the Foster Care Institute newsletter. I just sent you a link right now to our website. All right, so Danica, so go through the website. There's lots of resources for there. There's a great book, Danica, you should probably get The Foster Care Survival Guide, as well as the book, The Foster Parenting Manual, The Foster Care Survival Guide and the Foster Care Manual. Those are two great books for brand new foster parents, okay? So here's a link right now. I'm going to send you a link to our bookstore, and I'll be happy to send you a copy of those, a signed copy, personally signed to you, of those books. Again, the Foster Parenting Manual and the Foster Care Survival Guide. Danica, I just sent you a link to it right now, the bookstore, and you can order the books tonight, and we will get you signed copies tomorrow. But again, have a support group. Recognize your friends and family members really aren't going to understand what you do. Be very, very flexible. At the same time, be consistent with your rules. Make sure that your family's on board and buckle up because it is an adventure. It's a wild adventure that you've 
probably had no experience like what's whatsoever. I, I didn't know. Anita, I thought I knew. I thought I was prepared. Um, Danica, I thought I was prepared for my first child. I went through the training just like you. But I recognized within the first 20 minutes that I am not ready for this. So we'll have lots of resources for you right here at our website, Danica. Hey, everybody, thank you so much. I am over time, five minutes over time. I'm really glad you're here. We're going to do this again next. Um, just became foster parents in tw November 2021. Good for you, Danica. Welcome. So glad you're doing to do that. We're going to be here next Tuesday night. Next Tuesday night right here at the Foster Parent Help and Support Group page, um, giving you the help that you need. If you have additional questions, feel free to email me, drjohndegarmo at gmail.com. Follow me at Facebook, please, Dr. John DeGarmo Foster Care Institute. Would you please do that? Follow me at Dr. John DeGarmo Foster Care Institute. I want to make sure that um, you're getting the help that you need. All right. Uh, this is it. This has been um, Foster Talk with Dr. John. So glad you've been with us. And we are going to do this. Hey, Denny, thank you. We're going to do this again next Tuesday night. With the Foster Care Institute of Dr. John DeGarmo. Thank you for what you do, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.